okay, this is going to be a fun one because at the end, we're going to actually make a macro. Let's get to know another couple of objects that will be critical to your VBA career. Worksheets, rows, and columns. Worksheets are an absolute necessity. We do all kinds of things with worksheets, but let's start with the absolute basics. Adding them and deleting them. As you can see, the code for this is pretty simple. We have our worksheets object, and then we have our add method and our delete method. You can try this along with me if you'd like, just open a blank workbook. Okay, I'm gonna add a sheet. I'll type in worksheets.add and I'll hit enter. Cool, that was easy. Okay, let's try deleting it. I'm gonna type worksheets.delete and I'll hit enter. Mm. After attempting to delete the worksheet, you'll probably get a warning about your workbook needing to have at least one sheet, or maybe it'll say something like, this action will close the workbook. And that's because our code is missing something really important. Right now, our code literally says to delete all the worksheets. See, when you refer to worksheets, but you don't specify which worksheet, the assumption is that you're referring to all worksheets with an S at the end. So this is a good time to remind us that in VBA, we must select to affect. If I had specified which worksheet I wanted to delete, VBA wouldn't have gotten confused. We can refer to specific worksheets by either typing its name inside the parens in double quotes, just like we do with the range object. So an example would be worksheets and then the sheet name, which for me is sheet one. I'll type that in dot delete. And just like that, it works. The other strategy that we can use is we can refer to the worksheet number. And that's the worksheet number in the order that you see at the bottom of Excel, starting with the first sheet being number one. This is a really common practice and it's a pretty important way to refer to sheets. Okay, trying this one too. Worksheets, and I'm referring to sheet one, dot delete, and hit enter, and it works. Okay, let's take this lesson with us to learn about the next object. Let's work with rows. We definitely need to be able to add and delete rows. So let's do that first. The worksheets object had an add method, right? But the rows object uses an insert method instead. So just a slightly different name to add a new thing. And with rows, we definitely need to specify which row we want to insert above or which row we want to delete. So let's try this out. I'm typing in rows and we're talking about row one dot insert. Cool, that worked. And I'll try deleting now. Rows two dot delete, hit enter, and it worked. Okay, let's take these principles and go do the same thing with columns. So we insert and delete columns the same way with the insert and delete methods, but we refer to columns slightly differently. Columns can be referred to by their numbered order, so number one would be column A, or you can actually use the column's name or the letter of the column. We can do that the same way that we refer to sheet names and range names. We just put that name surrounded in double quotes inside those parens. Let's try this out. So typing in columns, and I'm referring to column one, dot insert, hit enter, and there we go. Let's try it with a letter, columns, and I'm referring to column A, dot delete, and there we go, easy peasy. And with that, we have a sales team who needs our help. Welcome to your first macro exercise. This could potentially be a real world exercise for you one day. This was a real world exercise that I had. And the first thing I wanna tell you before you program your own macro is there are probably 10 different ways you could program this macro, and they would all be correct as long as they got the job done. So just use your new knowledge and be creative and try to come up with something that does the job. Okay, so here's the scenario. Our sales team gets this report from their financial app every quarter, and then they have to clean it up a bit before it's ready to use. And they have to do this like 20 times and they always perform the same steps. So this is definitely something that can be automated by a macro. See if you can create a macro for them that does the following. Start by opening the exercise file that's under this video. Or if you aren't comfortable with downloading files from the internet, that is totally fine. And you can just generate some data that looks like this. Just make sure not to use this on any of your important data. After we've opened the file, we're going to insert a new module and a new procedure in VBE. Then we're going to have our macro remove the first row. 
It has some code in it that our team doesn't need. You can just remove it. Second thing we're gonna do is remove that last column there. That's always in column I and it's got a code. Again, our sales team doesn't need it. Next thing that we're gonna do is insert two rows below the title that says sales slash segmentation report for quarter four. We're just gonna create two rows of empty space between that title and the actual data table. So once we've done that, we're going to add one more worksheet. This is their summary worksheet that they use. And on that worksheet, we're going to enter the text quarter four into cell A1. Just a hint on this last step. To do this, you'll need to use the skills that we covered in the last video on range and cells objects and the value property. There are several backup sheets in this exercise file so that you can test as many times as you want. When you're ready to run your macro, click on the green triangle in VBE. If you run into any trouble, click the blue square in VBE and try again. If you get really stuck, take a look at my code so that you can make sure that you've typed in the syntaxes correctly. Once you've done that, come on back. If you were able to successfully create that macro, congratulations. If you ran into trouble, don't worry. Our code never runs perfectly the first time. It often doesn't run perfectly the 10th time. That's all part of the programming world. If you have trouble, post some questions on here. This community is designed for us to all help each other. And if you found a really cool way to do this, post that too. All right, either way, well done. You deserve a break. Whenever you're ready, come on back because we got some really cool stuff to get to.